Hola, how y'all doing? Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I got a word for y'all today. While you're at your desk, while you are either at your desk or in the office or at home at your office, you have not made it this far to, uh, to quit, friend. You didn't. God did not lead you this far to leave you. He didn't. I'm here to remind you to stay the course, to remember all of those wins that you have endured and experienced along your way. I want you to remember all of the losses, the L's you took too. But I want you to remember how God brought you through that. You need to remind yourself of the greatness in your life. You need to remind yourself of how you've persevered. You need to remind yourself of all of those people, friend, that have come before you, whether they're your grandmother, whether you're your father, your mother, your aunties, your cousins. I don't care if you got to go back to elementary school and junior high and high school and remember the love that people showed you when you didn't have nothing. When you was just living off of what your mama and daddy and them bought you. You need to remind yourself today of your greatness. Because all that you're going through now is just a discour it's just to discourage you. You haven't made it this far in life to be defeated. You have not. God did not bring you this far through all of your hills and your valleys and your caves and your highs and your lows and your fears and your despair and your discouragement. God did not bring you out of all of that for you to be defeated, friend. You must remind yourself of the love that is over you. All of those people that have come before you, your grandmother, your father, your mother, your auntie, your cousins, all of them, from generations to generations, people you don't even know, are proud of you. They're sending you love in spirit. They are going before you, protecting you in spirit. There is a method to this madness and you are not alone. They understand and they are in agreement with you. And they and God are working it out for you. You need to stay in alignment. You need to stay in the word of God. You need to make the declarations over your life. I am loved. I am prosperous. I am successful. I am protected. My life is necessary. I am worthy. I am all success. I am all health. No weapon formed against me will not ever prosper. Not in this life, nor in the next, not ever. Got to remind yourself of the facts. And those are the facts. Why are they the facts? They're the facts because you are a child of the most mightiest God. You are ordained by the blood. You were born into the world of light. Do you know how difficult it was for you to even be conceived, let alone born? You're a 10, 20, 30 time lottery winner. Just from the mathematics. Everyone in this world is a lottery winner. We're all winners here. There is a design to your life. Do not for a second let another make you feel unworthy. You are the captain to your ship. It is you that programs the navigation of your boat. You cannot allow someone to come in to your ship and take over. And now who you are, your I am is who they are, their I am. This whole life, this whole thing, this whole schematic is based off of will, primarily. Who are you? You are born with your own innate gifts that nobody else in this world has. Do not allow the things of this world to transform your gifts into someone else's. Stay unique. Stand in your I am and remember the love that is over you and that will never leave you. 
Do not be discouraged. Do not be intimidated. Tell it to God like Hezekiah did in prayer and lay it at the altar. Speak the truth of your situations to God in integrity and in truth, even if it doesn't look good, even if it don't sound good. But the fact that you come to God in honor and humility and you lay it at the feet of God and say, I, I need to give this to you. God will work it out in your behalf, friend. These children, I just did the Bible study on Hezekiah and the children, and the, Heze and the children are now finding that they are not living under the covenant. They have, they have transgressed for so long that they don't even remember the law of their fathers. Just like we are here now, nowadays. Many of us don't remember the law of our fathers. Because we've been up under the nation so much that we have taken on the law of their fathers and their ways. And the children know it and, and Hezekiah immediately, excuse me, begins to become more in line with the law of Moses. But once he does that, he gets a bullseye on his back. And now the, the, the biggest uh, uh, um, force in the world, not even the nation, I said in the world in my Bible, in the nation in my Bible study, but really this force, this, um, the Assyrians were the strongest nation in the world at that time, the whole world. They come, come upon this small tribe of Israel that has dwindled down to nothing. They're, they're faced with insurmountable challenges that they cannot escape, that they will not be able to overcome just on their own. This force, this nation that has come upon them can annihilate them could cut the vine right at the time that they began to align themselves back to the original will of God, right at the time when the frequency, the connection is, 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 um, uh, brought back online. Here comes this nation. And what Hezekiah does is he gives the, he asks the, the, the people, he says, look, whatever we've done against you, please forgive us. What can we do to solve this? He didn't even know what the problem was. And they said, give us money. But Israel didn't have money. They are broken. They don't have anything. They are the lowest of the low at this time. All of their enemies have enslaved them. They are not respected amongst the nations. They have a horrible reputation. People are laughing at them. They're not even competitors. They're peasants in the eyes of these people. And Hezekiah goes and he takes the gold from the temple of God. He takes God's money and he gives it to him and says, here you go. We don't want no problems with you. But that wasn't enough. They come back and now they're saying, look, you need to come and bow to us because we're going to, we're going to wage war with you and we don't want to destroy you. They come to them like they're doing them a favor. But really, they're coming to, to intimidate them because they know the law. These children don't know the law, but everybody else knows it. And they're abiding by the law of this God of Israel as, uh, how, as to how they interact with these children because they don't want any problems. These children don't even know what's going on. This is how blinded they are. They are. God sees this. I'm here to tell you, friend, there's a method to this madness. You are loved and you are protected. You are worthy and you are necessary. And all the enemy wants you to feel is that you are not. They got to get you here. They can't get you no other way. Do not be defeated in your own kingdom. Do not Remind yourself of your greatness. Remember all of those people that have come before you in love, that loved you, that saw the greatness in you. Remember the love. Declare the love over yourself. I don't care what it looked like. Just like these people that came upon the children, it looked awful. But Hezekiah and Israel said, we will not bow to you. We will not allow you to defeat us mentally. 
Even though we don't have anything materialistically, you will not defeat us in our mind. So no, thank you. You got to say no. No. Come hell or high water. I said no. And this is what I'm standing on. And I mean it. Yesterday I might have been down. I might, you might have you almost had me yesterday. But today I say no. And either way it go, it's going to be fine. Because God be with me. God is for me. My father will make a way for me. Period. So you do what you got to do. That's the attitude, friend. That's 2024. That's the spirit we own this year. Because either way it go, you have the victory. I would rather have the victory in spirit than to have the victory in, in, the, in the material any day. Because the spirit dominates all of this. We think that the, the might of our will is what runs this. You are fooling yourself. And my God will show you. That is the spirit that we have. We come in peace. But we don't get knocked around and beat up. It is the love that has covered you thus far. You got to remember all that you have come through. You know like anybody, better than anybody, what you have come through. All of your doubts, all of your fears, all of your insecurities, how you felt alone at times, who came through and who didn't. When they came through, what happened before they came through, what things led you to those people. And you will see nothing but the hand of God throughout all of it. You'll love more than you'll ever know. That is my testimony to you. I give you these things because they are what, what got me through and they currently get me through now. There is no perfection here. I'm not perfect. I have my shortcomings that I wrestle with. But God is perfecting me. And I'm allowing God to perfect me. And I ask that you do the same. Be good to yourselves. You'll love more than you'll ever know. That enemy, that them Amorite, that those are... Uh, Assyrians that the mightiest nation of the world when they came upon this small tribe of people They didn't know they didn't see how they could get out of it And you know what God did God said, okay, I know you haven't been living in alignment long I know you just now getting back in alignment Because this was the reason why they were so doubtful. They're like we haven't even been living in alignment, right? We just found this law of Moses. We just started acting uh, aligning to it and now all of this, will God protect us? God said, I will, I will do more than protect you. I will make a statement from this. I will make a statement from this. Because it's personal. It's personal. Stay close. Stay in alignment. Your love. Peace and love.